I'd explain, but what's the point? Coming up today, we're making Julia Child's enormous chocolate cream puff. Welcome to Jamie and Julia. Oh, <laughs> bon appetit. We got ourselves a new year, which means I got myself a new cookbook. It's Julia Child's The Way to Cook. She described this one as being her magnum opus. Like her life's work is in here. Look at this thing, it's a beast. Uh, I've been recommended this one from so many of you that I just finally bit the bullet and picked it up. It's like a culmination of uh, her career in cooking. Not as a spy. It's not just French recipes either. There's all sorts of stuff. It's recipe after recipe. I'm never gonna run out of recipes. So that's a warning. And the great thing is there's even photos. My first victim is gonna be this. Enormous cream puff au chocolat. I just like saw the photo, I was like, all right, make a giant ring, fill it with whipped cream, and douse each serving with warm chocolate sauce. A dramatic presentation that always brings forth great smiles of pleasure. Shall we get started? Parchment paper, and I need a 12 to 14 inch pot lid. That's perfect. And I need a marker. Flip that upside down. So we gotta start with the, uh, I took the dust cover off. We gotta start with making a shoe pastry. We've done it many times before, two and a half cups worth. So I gotta to blend together five eggs. One cup worth, 250 mils. So saucepan. Over here, one cup, 250 mils of water. Six tablespoons of unsalted butter cut into a tablespoon each. All of it goes in with the water. Tablespoon of sugar and a teaspoon of salt. So I gotta bring that over here to a boil. As soon as the butter has melted, I gotta turn it off the heat and add in my flour. What is this? One cup, 125 grams worth. And you gotta beat it vigorously. Lumpy at first, and then it will start to smooth out. Once this thing has balled up and separated itself from the sides of the pan, Julia says that takes around a minute. I always find that it takes far less. I gotta take it off the heat. I actually gotta go back over here. I gotta move, move you. Okay, you good? You good? Bowl me. Thank you. And this. This is a new step, but it's a new cookbook, right? So the pastry goes into this bowl instead of leaving it in a saucepan. And take a minute and read what you gotta do. Well, we know what we gotta do. We've done this so many times before. We gotta make a well in the center of this dough. Add in a quarter cup worth of the eggs. And yeah, just kind of beat that in, beat it in. And she says it's gonna look weird to start, which it always does, because they're like two different things, but they, they become one, two becomes one. But once you keep going, it should start to hold its shape. Repeat with another quarter cup of the eggs. So just keep doing what you're doing, and uh, well, would you look at that? We match. So I gotta beat in the remaining eggs by the dribbles so that the pastry is not too loose. And of course, I'm using a wooden spoon because she says to use a wooden spoon. Uh, that's nice, it's really nice. So I got a piping bag here and I'm not really even using a nozzle. I just attached the, um, uh, whatever it's called. I'm at a loss of words. The coupler? I... So with the parchment paper with the circle and my baking sheet and my piping bag with my warm pastry dough, Let's do this. Pipe a circle of the warm shoe paste to cover the circular guide. There, just make that a bit. There, pipe another circle on the outside or inside in my case, because my pan isn't as big as whatever she's using, I'm sure. Cool, do one right on top of those two. One egg, a little bit of salt, water. I'm just gonna mix that with my brush and you come back over here. Paint the shoe, paint the circle, paint the wheel. 
with uh, my egg glaze. Evening out any bumps with the flat of your brush. This brush is kind of too firm. I'm gonna use a different brush. Yes, that's better. Bake this until the pastry has puffed to almost triple in height and is nicely browned. 20 to 25 minutes in 450F to start, and we'll go from there. And lower half of the oven. We're all, we're all set. Now we wait. After 22 minutes, let's turn the temperature down to, come on, 400. Pierce the sides to let some of the steam out. After another 10 minutes, I had turned the temperature down to 350F. So after another 10 minutes, oven goes off. And keep the door ajar for another 10 minutes. Okay, so all of this is in the interest of drying out the puff, but there will still be some damp pastry inside. Did I get it right? Oh, I got it. That's perfect. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's... Yeah, as promised, this is quite enormous. I'm gonna just take it out of that. Here is my ginormous shoe pastry. And I'm looking at this thing and it reminds me of something I made years ago on this channel. Way back when, before I had any silver in the beard. The Perry Breast. And if I look, I look at this book here and if I flip the page, Perry Breast, it's on the next page. So Julia has a recipe of what I'm describing. Uh, when I made it way back when, it was a success. And uh, oh, stupid thing. It's like the cheapest one I could find. Anyway, the reason I brought that up is, why? Oh, because this reminded me of that. Anyway, let's move on. I gotta cut this thing in half horizontally. I'm kind of hesitant to do this next step, but that's what she... Scrape the uncooked pastry out of the bottom and the top. So is all of this right here considered uncooked? I have to scrape all of this out? There's even a photo and everything. All right, that's what she wants. So I feel like I'm taking away some good parts of this pastry, but this is what Julia says. With the insides facing up, go back into a 350 degree oven for five minutes to crisp them up. What I need to do is make the filling, which is homemade whipped cream. I'm gonna be adding in a couple little things to, to give it a little bit of a taste. You're gonna need one of these and bowl me. Thank you. I'm gonna take both of these, I'm gonna put them in the freezer for like five minutes. Okay, bowl into some ice water. This is two cups of heavy cream. I whip this up super stiff. Here we go. Took my eyes off that for one second. I'm okay. A sieve in a cup of icing sugar teaspoon of vanilla. Well, I guess you don't need all this now. I'm gonna keep this in the fridge until I need it. So what we gotta do is make a warm chocolate sauce. So I need a saucepan. Is that gonna hold two cups worth? Yes, it will. Three cups worth, great. Two third cup of white corn syrup into a saucepan. I'm sure it's very refreshing to see someone at the beginning of the year making such a health conscious uh, dessert. That's what we like to do over here. I'm gonna bring this to a boil. Turn off the heat and I'm gonna add in two third cup around 150 mils of water. Give that a stir. This is half a cup of cocoa powder mixed together with one and a half cups of granulated sugar. I'm gonna add it in here. Come on, come on. Oh dear. The saucepan is too small. You still have some more things to add, so I think you're gonna have to switch saucepans. You tried. Bigger saucepan. Simmer this and stir for several seconds until I am sure that the sugar has dissolved. Keep it whisking and keep it simmering. 
add in two ounces, 57 grams of unsweetened baking chocolate that has been chopped up. Remember when I was telling you how healthy this thing is? I'm gonna add in six tablespoons of butter. I probably should have just sliced that up, but it will do its job, it's gonna melt. And this is half a cup of heavy cream. What we gotta do is turn this up to a full blown boil for 15 seconds. That was fast. Turn off the heat. Pinch of salt. Add two teaspoons of vanilla. The vanilla causes like some sort of chemical reaction. <laughs> we gotta assemble this thing. I just realized that the only platter, serving platter I have is that. I don't think this is gonna fit on my serving platter. It doesn't fit. <laughs> it doesn't fit. We're gonna have to stick with the cutting board today, which is fine, we've done it before. So I gotta fill the rim with the whipped cream. Now the top goes on top. I, I really wish I could do this on the platter. This just looks, it needs to be on a platter. And then drizzle the warm chocolate sauce on top. This is gonna be a huge mess, so I feel like I need to get it onto a platter. Things got pretty hairy there for a moment. It, it all kind of just unraveled. I, you know, so many things went wrong, I don't even know where to begin. So uh, let's not. You got the visuals, I'm sure. I'm willing to just kind of dust this one under the rug and move on. <laughs> There's so many mistakes and lessons that I learned in this first attempt that uh, I, I can't really sum them all up at the same time. I'm just gonna have to redo everything that I did and I will explain the things that I learned along the way. Okay, one thing that is apparent is that that circle, my wheel, the shoe pastry was way too big because it's gonna expand, right? It's gonna like triple in size and you need to be prepared. Pipe and bag, it's actually the same one as last time. I just washed it out. Got it. Reduce, reuse, recycle. I found with my first attempt that I overbaked it, so I just cut back on the, the baking time by a few minutes, and I think that was the right call. Uh, because this is much softer and just it feels better. It looks better last time Julia said to scrape uncooked pastry out of the bottom and the top I'm skipping that step it's something you learn with experience because this is this is cooked. It looks good I feel like I'm gonna be missing this in the finished dessert if I remove it also when I removed it I found that I had to add even more cream to compensate for the missing part of this pastry and I don't want to do that this time around. With the insides facing up, I am going to put it in the oven at 350 for five minutes just to dry it out a bit. I have the tiger. How's it looking? Oh yeah. Um, I'm focused to get this right. 
You know, I've never wanted something more in all my life. Well, there is many things I want way more than a giant, enormous cream puff of chocolate, but not today. So I'm gonna add four cups of heavy cream into my chilled bowl. I just wanna like cover my ass right now, so I'm gonna double this cream filling recipe because, you know, on the first go, I felt like I didn't have enough. Things you learn with experience. Am I making too much whipped cream? Probably. And a few tablespoons of vanilla, please. I think that's about it. You've added everything you needed to into that. It's nice and stiff. We're done. If there's powdered sugar and me in the vicinity, there's a guaranteed mess. And we're gonna assemble this enormous cream puff au chocolat. Uh, I don't know what the hell I was trying to do with that gold serving dish. I, I don't know. I just chucked it out the window. I don't need it anymore. We're just doing everything on the cutting board. That was the goal from the get-go. That's, that's what we're gonna do, okay? <laughs> so let's add the whipped cream into the shell. So I guess I have backup in case I have to make a third one. God, I hope not. And then let's get the top part on. This looks so much better. Yes! I'm heating up the chocolate sauce in the microwave. Uh, did Julia ever use microwaves? I don't know. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's not gonna affect my decision. Okay, check out this warm chocolate sauce. First time around, this was way too thin. Like, you pour it on and it was see-through. It would just drip right off this thing. Not ideal. It just made a huge mess. So, <laughs> Uh, what I did is added a roux. It was around like a quarter cup of each, flour and butter. So I heated it back up and, uh, well, then I let it cool completely before heating it back up again in here. No, 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 no. Let's not pour it on just yet. Take a minute, appreciate what you've done so far. Okay, cool. And uh, you know what? Order up. It's just the shoe pastry has like this light crispiness to it. It's like perfect. Get over here. It's super soft, but it's got a little crunch. It's like, I don't know, it's tender on the inside. It's got like this, like, what am I doing? It's very soft on the inside. It's like borderline custardy. I, it's just this perfect vessel for all of this. It's just holding the whole fort together. Cream is still like holding its shape and it's been sitting here for like now 45 minutes or so. I think that's a good sign. I think it's a pretty solid whipped cream. That chocolate sauce has got something special going on. Mm. It's like sweet and salty, a little bit nutty and all the way perfect. I don't know what the secret ingredient was in that to make it taste as good as it does, but holy cow, you gotta make that chocolate sauce. Even if you don't wanna make a giant ass cream puff, at least make the chocolate sauce. Best enormous chocolate cream puff I've ever had. As Julia says, it's a dramatic presentation that brings forth great smiles of pleasure. This is Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Au revoir. The shoe pastry itself, it's got, it's like a, it's something you'd find in a dream. It's honestly magical. I, like, not only am I happy that I made it, it's just like the best thing I've, have made. In, t in terms of desserts, I don't know. Like every time I make a dessert, I always say, oh, this is the best, this is the best. I don't know what to say anymore. 